Now, one of the things that we introduced in Cubase 7 was a concept, a very simple concept called a chord track. So if I was a songwriter and I was having a hard time coming up with my song idea, I could come here and let's say, okay, a lot of people start off with a drum loop when they you know, are writing a song. So we'll, we'll say, okay, let's start off with just a particular drum loop. And just gonna set my loop points here. If I activate the project, that would help. All right, so, you know, and we see a lot of people when they're just initially coming up with a song idea that, you know, just like, okay, you know, we see guitar players, keyboard players, bass players, when they actually start a song or when they pick up their instrument for the first time, how many times do we see like a guitar player play the same parts over and over again, almost like a musical rut, kind of, kind of almost muscle memory. Okay, I pick up a guitar, I play this lick. So now what we could do is we see people get into kind of harmonic ruts or people that maybe aren't necessarily uh, musically inclined or don't understand theory or harmony. So if I wanted to come here, let's say we start off I can now just kind of take this part and I'm going to just have a, so I'm going to come right here to my chord track and I can say, okay, let's start off with like an F chord and I could add another chord and say, okay, I could go to like a B flat chord and maybe I want it to end on a C chord. That's supposed to be good. All right. So we have this. But let's say, okay, I don't know a good chord to go from B flat to C. You could actually now just double click. And then at this point, you could go to the chord assistant and it could actually show you chords that work musically with this. So you can say, okay, do it by common notes. So you can say, okay, maybe it's saying we could do this chord or we could actually have kind of different levels of complexity. So you can say, okay, let's just take kind of this chord, or you could actually now look at proximity and circle of fifths. So you can say, okay, I wanted to now go to maybe a related chord. So at this point you could just say, okay, let's just grab maybe a G minor chord, or we could look at it by proximity or circle of fifths. So you could actually just kind of try out different chord ideas. Now let's say you have the singer there and they're like, oh yeah, I don't feel the key. You know, all you have to do now is just say, okay, let's just transpose to the key of E. And if you wanted to kind of change like the chord voicings, you say, okay, let's do like a first inversion chord. And if I wanted to turn that into MIDI data, all I have to do now is just drag it down and I've created MIDI parts based on that. Now where this also gets really interesting is when we want to do something like where we have existing parts with a chord track. So let's say I have a, like maybe a quick cue here for a film project and we could say, okay, let's just grab this. So at this point I could actually tell these tracks to follow the chord track. So if I come here, I could just say, I want this to be, in the key of D, then all my tracks will change to the key of D. Wasn't that hard? Sure, you could go through and you know take 1,800 tracks and change them manually if you want to. So let's say I come here and I say, oh, right here I wanted to do a key. I want to change the chord to maybe an E chord. Let's make it an E minor chord. Then if I want to do a quick turnaround, I can just kind of come here and say, okay, let's do an F sharp minor. We can navigate to the next chord, to a G. And now all the parts will just kind of automatically just change. Let's say let's do an A major seven chord, an A seven chord. And those parts will just change. So if you're a composer and you know someone's like, oh yeah, make it that sad chord, you know, it's just like, 
oh, it's going to take a long time, and just boom, and just change it to a minor chord. Now, as you kind of work with different components here as well, what's interesting is, let me just open up a different project, show you something cool. So let's say a lot of times we see like gospel musicians sometimes are the best because they play these incredibly beautiful chords and they have no idea what chord it is. You know, I remember asking a friend of mine, you know, he just played this great chord. I was like, man, what chord is that? And he's like, that's the Aunt Helen chord. <laughs> and I was like, okay, and I'm like figuring out the, okay, you doing that? Uh, oh, okay, I think I got it, you know. So sometimes you have people that do that a lot. So if we have a part that is like a piano part, so if we looked at it in, you know, your notation view, um, what's kind of cool about this is I could actually say, right click on it and let's go to the chord track. And as you do this, we can say create chord symbols. And what I could do now is it's gonna automatically break apart the chords and it actually will kind of give you the key. At this point, you could actually just kind of see the different chords broken out for you. Now, what gets really interesting is when you say, so if I wanted to listen to this. So I see G, D with F sharp in the bass and E minor seventh. G sus four. Now Cubase has amazing vocal editing. And you know, this is one of the things that you see a lot of programs where you have to spend like more money than the program to tune. So if I double click here, on my actual vocal part, let's say, okay, we'll just maximize this and we'll go into our sample editor. We could go into what we call very audio. So what I'm gonna do is we'll say, okay, let's go to pitch and warp. And then I'm gonna say actually colorize based on a chord track. So now that we figured out what the piano chords are, we see kind of red notes, blue notes, green notes. So green notes fall within a chord. A blue note falls within the scale and a red note is out of key. So if I wanted to come here. So let's say I move that to a red, a red note there. This should be lovely, all right. All right, kind of sounds like a Grammy performance, anyway. Yeah. yeah, so, but if I move it up to a different green note, I know that that note's gonna work musically, just based on the color. So even if you don't understand the harmony. So let's say we come here. And we go, okay, well, you know, let's say, you know, uh, the singer left and it's like, man, it'd be cool if we could have some harmonies there, but the singer's gone. Or let's say maybe you didn't want the singer to stay. Um, you could kind of come here and we could select just the vocal part here. And at this point, I could say, go to my audio menu and say, let's just generate harmony voices. So say, let's give us two harmonies. And now as we do this, I'll just kind of, adjust our volumes here just a little bit. I mean, it's, it's figured out what the harmonies are based on the actual chords. And it gave me a soprano and an alto. So let's say here, instead of a soprano, let's just make that into a tenor. So now I can... And now I could actually select all three parts and hit enter and I could just see my different harmonies all laid out for me so I could edit them together. So I say, okay, let's come here. Let's try this because that's a green note, so that will work. Green, good, red, bad, stop, you know. And let's say, okay, let's grab, you know, this voice here. So, you know, this way you know exactly what harmonies will work and which <laughs> harmonies won't work. Now we wanted to extend this a little further as well with Cubase 8. Um, and we added something called chord pads because, you know, and I, I work with all sorts of different people, you know, it's like, you know, you know, like last week I got, you know, a call from Teddy Riley followed by Donnie Osmond and Alan Holdsworth in the same afternoon. So I, I get to help a lot of like really interesting variety of people. Um, and one of the things that's, you know, we see, especially, and I've seen this in a lot of R&B circles where maybe the producer or famous ones don't really understand harmonies. And they, you know, I, and I have friends that get paid very well to be what they call chord men, you know, where they just basically, it's like, okay, you play the chords, I'll say yes and no. 
And then you play those chords, and it's like, I'll tell you if I like that chord or not. Right? You know, and, you know these people are incredibly successful, so you know, they're doing something right. You know, they have a much nicer house than myself. So, so now, if I wanted to come here, we, we could go to our chord track here, and we could activate something called chord pads. So I could just come here and say, and as I wanted to do this, now, what's kind of cool about this is we could just trigger these chord pads from MIDI data. So if I come here, let's, we'll slide down our MIDI notes so I could, let me just turn this up a little bit here. Now I could very easily just adjust my different parts here. So let's say if I wanted to change the chord, I could have my chord dialogue like we saw earlier in our chord part. If I wanted to come here, I could also just change the chord voicings. So if I say, okay, let's try a different chord voicing. Or different chord tensions. So we see a lot of people that, you know, maybe aren't keyboard players, but they have to kind of, you know, if they're dealing with composing, being a keyboard player makes it so easy. You know, and last time I was showing this in Los Angeles, you know, we had a, a friend of mine who works with, has done a lot of work with Stevie Wonder over the years. He's like, I don't understand why people just don't play keyboards. You know, just just sit down and play it. And it's like, okay, play it on guitar. And he's like, okay, I get your point. You know, so if it's not your native instrument, you can now kind of come here. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, you we could actually have different presets. But let's say I have an existing part here on my project, I could also just, in, I'm going to say, okay, we're gonna use our uh, create chord symbols. So I'll go to my chord track here. And at this point, I can say, okay, we'll create our chord symbols. And as we've done that, I could now click right here and we'll say, assign pads from the chord track. So once I've kind of taken that now, So if I wanted to actually just kind of record this, what's kind of cool, I could just, you know, just come right here and say, as we're recording. And then I just kind of used a software MIDI controller. Now, some people may be more oriented for, you know, we see this kind of mimicking a piano keyboard here. Now, um, and if we could also have a kind of more extensive control, so I could actually choose whether I want it to be piano chord voicings or guitar chord voicings. If I click on the edit button, we could actually load up different players, if you will. So you could actually have different patterns. So you could actually have like different presets. So I could now say. This way you could just have those different presets and you could just record and you could actually just drag and drop a MIDI part directly onto the preset. Uh, and again, you can say, okay, I want this to now be for a guitar player. And then you can say, let's add a basic guitar part. So as I come here, um, you could just kind of play these different voices. And you, so you could have it not play just pianos, but you have to do roads, guitar, strings. So, you know, if you're like stuck somewhere where you just have a laptop and you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you know, you can just simply kind of, you know, belt out parts very quickly. Now, with, you know, and if I wanted to actually kind of see this as like, you know, a grid instead of a piano keyboard, I could just kind of have all of my favorite chords laid out right here. And you could have up to 64 chords. And what else is kind of interesting is as we do this, I could, from MIDI, so let's say if I go back to my player view and I go to my keyboard and we go to player and let's say, okay, let's do the pattern. I could just kind of do plain chords and I could also just use another MIDI note to just change these. So let's say I go to my remote control and now I can hit the chord. And so if I do that, we could just ha have different MIDI notes that do that, or if you want to do 
different tensions and different voicings. Or if you want to transpose. So this way you could just kind of easily try out ideas because, you know, we see so many people that are just kind of like, you know, often if you go to Nashville, you know, there's a great thing on YouTube that you probably see where they're taking the same six different songs and basically showing that they're the same exact song. So obviously there's a lot of songwriting ruts going on. Uh, so now you could actually say, oh, let me just try a different chord. Oh, I, you know, oh, I like that chord. Let me just drag it and replace that chord. And now you could just try out different ideas very easily and kind of have a software based uh, controller. You know, because so many people are just kind of working with laptops and, you know, if you're not a, you know, if you're a drummer who doesn't have good piano keyboard skills, you can still kind of realize your creativity with this. So it's a great way to actually kind of perform with the chord track live. Um, so very interesting. And, you know, and it's also just, you know, being able to take a look and say, oh, you know, coming up with and getting out of that rut and seeing chords that are related musically so that you don't do something that's really odd. Or if you wanted to say, okay, I want to go from F to F sharp diminished chord, you know, whatever, that, you know, just to be different. Um, so very easy way to kind of actually have more control over your chord track. Mm -hmm.